powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. But he can also fly, so it's a tad less impressive when you know that. Up in the sky! It's a bomb! It's a plane! No, I'm not looking up for any of those. It's Supermon! Supermon! Yes, it's Supermon! A gimmicky attempt for a YouTube channel to drive up viewership. Supermon! Standing uncomfortably still, <laughs> making everyone feel awkward. Supermon! Critiquing what's left of the Superman movie so he can pad out another compilation video. Supermon! Who, disguised as nostalgia critic, mild mannered loser in desperate need of getting laid, fights a never-ending <laughs> battle to spew because it's the American way. Let's go back to the beginning of superhero movies. Not that way. How well, many audiences find themselves growing tired of superhero flicks? There was a time when they weren't even a thing. Sure, there were shows and serials, but a superhero film, at least a serious superhero film, wasn't really a thing until Superman. And even then, superhero flicks didn't really become a genre until Batman over 20 years later. And even then, it kind of took a long time to become a regular thing. Superman really was the OG cinematic superhero. And while I've covered several of the Superman movies in the past, I never have talked about the ones that started it all. So, all throughout March, I'm going to go over the cinematic Superman movies I haven't covered. Superman 1, 2, and 3, and then finish it off with a special look at the Snyder Cut, which combined might actually be as long as Superman 1, 2, and 3. So let's begin Superman. Superman, wearing clothes so tight you wonder if he rolled up a pair of socks too weird. Let's start with the 1978 classic, Superman the Movie. If the movie that made us believe a man could fly. Explain how excited but also nervous the film industry was about this flick. Remember, superhero films weren't a thing yet, so there was a big push to make this film a spectacle if, say, they missed the window of superheroes' popularity. The biggest stars were named first, even if they had less screen time than the only thing I, the the only thing I saw in Christopher Reeves was the only thing I saw Christopher Reeves in was Smallville, so <laughs> and the only thing I saw. The only thing that I saw more the killer than was Smallville, and that's it. She was only in two episodes. She was only in two episodes of Smallville, but she left due to Christopher Reeves' due to the fact that the Smallville writers were capitalizing on Christopher Reeves' passing, and Christopher Reeves was only in three episodes of Smallville before his passing. Just saying, those were the only two things I saw in Christopher Reeves and Marvel Killer. The film is still iconic all these years later, and we're gonna check out why. I should really watch this movie. So let's start off, Superman. Superman! If he did roll up a pair of socks, why did he find the bigger size to tuck in his. We're good! Let's take a look at Superman the movie. The film sets the tone with an old school intro, making it clear it's gotta harken back to the golden age of comic books and not be filled with a bunch of dated 70s references. Well, not many. Hey, Jim, go! Excuse me. That's a bad idea. All that's missing is a hat. <laughs> but at the same time, the titles are like, hell with that noise, here's the real shit you're waiting for. <laughs> yeah, for 1978, these are some damn impressive intro effects. The titles have you saying, all right, I'm okay looking at nothing but text for two minutes. And as I'm sure countless people have pointed out, John Wayne's amazing music is one of the few themes that actually sings its title without any lyrics. You hear it? You do, do. It's not just me. We're introduced to the planet Krypton, or as some like to say, Krypton. Krypton. Kind of Krypton. Kind of Krypton. I tell you, Krypton, you leave Krypton. It sounds like they're yeah, saying can we turn play Jarrell in Smallville? <laughs> and play Jarrell Zahn. I can only they, even, they even created like a CGI form for Smallville showing, 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 showing General Zod, Terrence Stamps, General Zod in Smallville. Jor-El! Smallville's Jor-El. Terrence Stamps. On the woman Ursa, whose diversions and unreasoning hatred of all mankind have threatened even the children of the planet Krypton. I still <laughs> don't know what that means, and I'm still afraid to ask what that means. You will bow down before me, both you and then one day, your ass! Your ass? 
<laughs> See, this is what you get with that cryptid accent. <laughs> Vanished into a kind of cheap, but also kind of cool effect. But such a change, planet exploding. And I tell you that we must evacuate this planet immediately. I tell you, Krypton is simply shifting its own. Krypton warming just isn't a thing. Stop trying to get upvotes on your socials. With the council forbidding him to tell anyone else, Jarrell uses what little he has to get his baby boy off the planet. Have you finished? Nearly. What's a few wrap them in? Color? You know that's outlawed. Only Pillsbury Doughboy glow in the dark tinfoil is allowed. <laughs> Fun fact, though a strange illusion, these suits actually did glow on camera, but not in real life. Which is good. I think this kid would have had nightmares about radioactive sperm people if they did. You'll be odd, different. He'll be fast, virtually invulnerable. Honestly, I'm hoping he doesn't enslave them all. You will make my strength your own. See my life through your eyes. For as brief as Brando scenes are, he does make them count. You really feel the weight of this guy coming to grips with the end of the world, yet having some semblance of hope for his own son, which he now has to say goodbye to. It's a lot of emotions to play, but he really does nail it with a lot of calm, but also heartbreaking dignity. This is all I, all I can send you. Go out. He needs to be trained. Oh, no time, send him out. <laughs> he needs to be trained. They launch him in the crystal water chest. Now that for not even 20 minutes, this intro has all the makings of a Wagnerian climax. This feels appropriately large and epic because we've had time to see and feel the relationships built on this planet. I mean, obviously it needs more techno babble and pterodactyls and critical Nolan writing and yeah, okay, I'll play nice. I still say Krypton is shifting its orbit. Corral the centigrade with somehow all his bodily necessities taken care of. Did you say Corral? I think he meant to say Kalo, but it kind of, because I kind of, I kind of heard him saying Corral. That, that, that's, that's weird, Doug. And she'll be recast by she'll be recast by Nail Tool in the third movie. Well, oh. I don't know, we'll be recast by by Clark's future mom. It's a little odd that that's supposed to be Lois Lane, as the extended cut shows. Oh, Lois Lane, you have a writer's gift for invention. I'm glad they cut this as one. There does not look like there's that much of an age difference between them, and two, if there was, she would be older. How'd you get here so fast? I ran. Clark finds it rough though, not being able to tell anyone about his special ability. And there's one thing I do know, son, and that is you are here for a reason. It's not to score touchdowns. We gotta play it cool. Play <laughs> low, let everyone think you're normal, and then when the time is right, hold the White House hostage. We've talked about this. In a really well-done death scene, the father falls to his knees and gives one hell of a quivering lip. Oh, no. Jesus, that guy's gonna die. And Clark is literally in the dark about it until it's too late. It's a very eerie and heartbreaking moment. I know I said I lay off man as deal, and I meant it, but even outside that, I think most of us can agree there's a little too much over-explaining in superhero films now. I, I think it's small, though, they gave more jobs and can uh, stuff. And now I'm not trying to make this a big, I love small type, 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 of, type talk about that. I just think they did John, John, I, they did Jonathan death bearing small though. I couldn't even save him. So much of what Superman is and isn't, his strengths and weaknesses, what makes him alien but also makes him human, is in that line. Honestly, when I was a kid, my favorite scenes were probably your favorite scenes as a kid. The flying stuff, the epic destruction, the funny lines, action-adventure, all that stuff. 
But as an adult, these moments of Clark quietly thinking over who he is after his father's passing is amazing to me. It is so simple, yet so grand and epic, and it's paced and shot that way. The death of one person who is cherished and loved is just as huge and important as the death of an entire civilization. I know. I know. The perfect word I can use to describe it is Americana. Not cancel whatever you want here. Oh, sorry, boycott again. Just so different. But simple truths leading to complex emotions. Small words leading to big ideas. Humble beginnings leading to extraordinary futures. Like I said, there's a reason this is the blueprint for a lot of superhero movies. Though Clark hears something calling to him under the bar. Huh, so that's why the cows have six eyes. Clark takes this as a calling and tells his mother he has to go away and find his destiny. Do you know where you're headed? North. Clark, I told you, Santa isn't real. You'll never find him. He makes his way to the Antarctic where he tosses the green rod into the snow. <laughs> I like I'm impressed whenever I see how legit alien anything Kryptonian looks. Like, you've seen giant monsters and weird environments that are done so much, they can kind of be from any sci-fi. But this is so distinct and original, it truly does feel otherworldly. Uh... Uses the Kryptonian technology to summon sort of a living recording of his father. Again, kind of an advanced idea for something like this. So my son, speak. If a bad guy came in here and pretended to be me, would you fall for it? Oh my god, yes. Remember, we're species that let our planet blow up. We're not very good at crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Who am I? My name is Kalel. Years pass as Jarrell tells Clark about who he is. Again, moments like this I found really boring as a kid, but I also knew they were important. Almost like being put in a meditative state and coming out stronger. It establishes an atmosphere of patience and growing, which is what's required for the character. Which Clark certainly does. We finally get our first shot of Superman in the suit flying triumphantly through the air. And then you're stuck with his nerdy identity for 20 minutes. Ken, can you open this? Oh, sure, Mr. White. In any other movie, I'd be really pissed off. <laughs> but A, that is really funny when you think about it. All this build up, there he is, here we go, and then this for dozens of minutes. And B, we finally get some levity. Any more at home like you? Uh, not really, no. Christopher Reeve's Clark Kent is just as equally good as his Superman. He is 100% believable, awkward, and funny. Everyone knows the glasses don't hide that much and how tall and built he is. Come on, you can clearly tell this is Superman, but with his acting being that good, I actually can believe nobody would put this together. I guess I must have fainted. Fainted? You fainted? Sorry. His subtle change in voice reminds me a lot of Kevin Conroy's subtle change of voice with Bruce Wayne and Batman. Neither sounds like a fake voice, it's just the tiniest little tweaks, yet they sound like entirely different people. There's something I have to tell you. I'm really... Uh, I mean, I, I was, uh, at first, really nervous about tonight. Marco Kidris Lois Lane is equally entertaining. Especially when you wonder, what the hell is she writing about? Ah, sex maniac profile. Making sense of senseless killing. Here's that story on these side murder case. Wow, Superman clearly isn't on the clock yet. There's no Z in Brazil. How do you spell master? There's only one P in rapist. I kind of love the Superman movie to use that word as the PG-1 not directed by Snyder. That's another reason why they can hold off showing Superman a bit more, because the film's very good at showing why the city needs Superman, but also why Superman needs the city. Clark is very much a farm boy. He has simple values and an old-fashioned way of thinking. Perhaps you could arrange for half my salary to be sent to this address. He sends a check every week to his sweet gray-haired old mother. Actually, she's silver-haired. Lois is very much from the city. She has complex ideas and is also interested in always moving forward. There are very few people left in the world who feel comfortable saying that word. What word? Swell. Oh, so it's kind of natural. And what makes it so great is that they make it very clear neither one is better than the other. They both demonstrate pros and cons. And while Lois and Clark are very different, they do get along and help each other out. Just like how Superman's very simple yet optimistic demeanor will balance out the city's advanced yet also complicated environment. Superman and the city offset each other perfectly the same way Lois and Clark offset each other perfectly. 
Also, hi, Richard Donner. <laughs> yeah, I also think the extra time is worth it for that blooper. When a helicopter crashes, <laughs> Clark finally makes his first appearance as Soup's, changing in the classic way. Changing in this weird-ass way. Great! Who are you? I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> somebody has to talk to space the round, stopping all sorts of crimes and saving all sorts of kitties. Because of course there's a scene like that in this. Jesus, you saved the cat, yet you overlooked the child abuse going on inside. The proper party was saved. He even saves Air Force One. <laughs> planes fly anyway <laughs> do i even need to say why reeve is the best superman on top of being a pitch perfect clark kent he has both the reassuring smile that everything is gonna mm, be okay i'm more of a tom Wallen fan that says will i'm i'm more i'm i'm more tom Wallen. even in an outfit as silly as yeah, tom, that i'm i'm more on your side yeah, i'm more on tom Wallen's side He's an authority figure you actually do want to give your authority to because Tell you're making words about my, my Clarkin Rex. They are my Clarkin Rex. To other people. Can you hack me because the readers are their Clarkin Rex. But my Clarkin Rex are from Michael Rose Mom and Tom Wayne. With his bubbling sidekicks, Otis, played by Ned Betty, and Miss Tashmaka! How do you choose to congratulate the greatest criminal mind of our time? Try twisting it. <laughs> so Luther is kind of like Tim Burton's Catwoman, not comic accurate, but still a lot of fun. I do prefer the more menacing takes we've had in other versions, but this egocentric does get a lot of laughs, and when he needs to, he can come across as very menacing. Is that how a warped brain like yours gets its kicks fighting the death of innocent people? No, by causing the death of innocent people. I have no doubt he meant that. But yes, it is lame that he's not bald, and all because Hackman just didn't want to do it. Hell, Richard Donner had to actually convince him for months just to shave his mustache. This guy's like the anti-method acting. Instead of working around a role, he has the role work around him. <laughs> but as I mentioned, all the acting in this is pretty good, including the chemistry between Reed and Kidder. Has he got a family? Just like how I like God, it's super the the, the, the romance between Tom no, between Tom Lee and Eric Grant. Sure, she wears to every interview. Must have gone to the O'Neill School of Journalism and the two foot like children on a first date. Did you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. But uh, if I did, Miss Lane, you'd be the first to know about it. Ooh. Ooh. Please prove anything. Uh, yes, I can. What color underwear am I wearing? Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, something I never noticed till this time around. This movie's really horny. I think. Vigorous chest massage, mouth to mouth. I won't have one of my men doing anything I wouldn't be prepared to do myself. Do you like pink? I like pink very much, Louis. Hey! I guess it is a movie about a good-looking guy flying around in tights, but man, sometimes these movies make the Schumacher films look subtle. Why did you kiss me first? I didn't think you'd let me later. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. I sort of had a problem seeing too late. Oh, that's interesting. Can't see that coming back to bite you in the ass later. Tell me, what's your kryptonite? Oh, yeah, it's kryptonite. Ready? Clark. No, I'm not. You just uh, Oh, yeah. Not Clark Kent, by the way. He takes her flying in a scene that's very romantic and also very aerodynamically impossible. And it's a very nice, lovely moment. Until that poem. Can you read my mind? I don't know who you are. Just a friend from another star. I know so many people who absolutely love this scene until it gets to the dumb poem. Here I am, like a kid out of school. I'm a fool. Oh. Now, to her credit, about half of Lois's lines are pretty lame. Do you. eat? <laughs> what? But Kitty's performance often does make them work, and she is trying as hard as she can to make this poem work. Sometimes it's passable, other times... You can see right through me. Can you read my mind? <sighs> it's a poem! What's a poem doing here? Believe it or not, it could be worse. She was originally supposed to sing this. Yep, the lyrics actually match up perfect with William's theme. Marie McGovern even did a cover of it. You read my mind. On second thought, maybe the poem is not sounding that bad. If you need a friend, I'm the one to fly to. Wow. 
the only poem going on in Clark's head is there once was a reporter from Nantucket. <laughs> you okay? Uh -huh. He drops her off and she finally thinks of an appropriate name. Superman. I'll call him Black Panther. Lex Luthor. Maybe while putting together too quickly that kryptonite can kill him. But this stuff here will kill him. Puts together a scheme to not only acquire some kryptonite, but also rewire some missiles for his diabolical scheme. And like I said, Snoopy's pretty horny. <laughs> that damn woman's hot. Her underwear's pink. I like pink very much. This is a romantic conversation we're having here. Otis screws up, though, and their first attempt doesn't work, so... All right, get it right. Okay, when did this turn into a Mary Melodies cartoon? Does Luger just have a Bugs Bunny dress ready to put on and say, Oh, howdy, boys! <laughs> wow. Only one thing alive with less than four legs can hear this frequency, Superman, and that's you. Luther makes a call to Clark on a frequency only he can hear, so Superman... <laughs> what? Kamen Riders him what Kamen Riders him what Kamen Riders himself down down the building. So he can sell real estate and another missile blow up somewhere else so Superman can't stop both. Uh, this is California. Don't need a geography lesson from you. <laughs> uh, where was I? California. Uh, California, right? This leads to probably my He probably himself. Get a little bit of property for himself. Marina Delight. Otisburg. Otisburg. Who's this monster? Visit Otisburg. I hear the pigs quite good. <laughs> the missiles are launched as they figure out too late they've been ripped. Though it's really not surprising when you figure out this was the gang charge. I have function negative, sir. They have the new P-20 low-level avoidance systems. Our next president has to be named Yelnik Nikwawa. <laughs> Superman, of course, discovers the kryptonite and he questions if Luther even cares where the other missile is going. I know exactly where it's headed. New Jersey. Yeah, that's not bad. I can drive. As Monica reveals her mother lives in Hackensack, so she frees Superman as long as he agrees to save her first. But you can't just stand there and let millions of innocent people die. Maybe. Ooh, the pop can approach. Just let him die. Maybe. Okay, I said I would lay off those jokes, but these two should not be so close on the same plane. <laughs> Sometimes believe a man can fly. Okay, for every corny effect, it's a damn good effect, too. A lot of these moments are really well done and actually kind of damn intense. Well, most of them. Oh, better than my chiropractor. Lois is caught in the middle of it all, though, as this earthquake clearly has it out for her. So really, once it gets to her car, it stops right in its tracks. I guess God's not a fan of bad punctuation, either. I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. So yeah, this is pretty much a horror film now. <laughs> For all the corniness this movie has, when it wants to get dramatic, it doesn't hold back. All of the little kids in the audience get to watch Lois slowly and horrifically die. Superman's reaction matches that intensity. Yeah, literally Lois dies. And, well, no, really. It's easy to believe that the wrote Godfather wrote this because, man, it just wants you to sit with this death scene. Reed plays it as serious as if this was a documentary. Like, it's some of the most chilling acting I've ever seen around a death sequence. Silly tights and all. I thought it was a kids, kids movie. No, no part of this movie. is half ever. He is committed to convincing you he just lost the most important person on the planet to him. <laughs> and then it gets dumb. Yeah, y'all know what's coming. Easily the worst part of the movie. Superman spins the earth in reverse and causes time to move backwards. There's... A million reasons why this doesn't work. Some say he could always do it, but then because it would interrupt in human affairs. Well, what, he hasn't already? And what, he could when do Smol this a times When Smallville did the whole really changing the death the thing, it killed Doug John, but not Lana. Like, so, shouldn't have they, shouldn't they have killed off another person? Was what gave him the extra adrenaline to do? What's it killed off Jimmy? What's, in saving Lois, it kills Jimmy. The gas station still blew up 
that he saved Jimmy from the dam, but the earthquake didn't happen? And let's say he did. Is there just another Superman flying Mikhail's... around that stopped that missile? What I'm... happens to him? I'm making a lot of small just... references in this video because of how much I love the that. show. Oh, is she okay? Well, she is now. Well, what happens to me? Well, you die. <laughs> It just don't add up! Any way you cut it, there's something that doesn't make sense. But like I said, the rest of this movie is still so good, it doesn't hurt it. It gets right back to being likable as hell. You're Clark. Clark around when Clark, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think Perry White is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Superman drops off Lex Luthor, shows they could have done a pretty convincing bald gap, so it just makes the wigs even more pointless. I just want to see people who look like me on the big screen. And Superman flies into space to look over the world, he throughout the galaxy's alignment, and we'll probably It took close 10 seasons in the show when it only took her one movie to figure it out. But <laughs> this film's still phenomenal. It took her yeah, 10 small seasons to find work, out, but this movie, it only took one movie. Set the bar for all future superhero movies. At a time where there really wasn't much of a precedent for this sort of thing, this film really decided to give a lot of drama, a lot of heart, and a lot of dignity while still keeping true to its playful silliness. It's amazing how well this film accomplishes being both light and upbeat, but also heavy and epic at the same time. It's one of the best superhero movies ever made, and if it isn't your all-time favorite, I can assure you, it definitely inspired your all-time favorite. Almost my favorite show. Critic, and Super Mutt has just begun! Super Mutt! It was a bitch about the tiniest things any normal person wouldn't care about. Stop! Stop! We're done! My show. My show. Otis. My 